When I was 15, I came across the song Orange Juice by Odd Future. It was very easy to get into, and Odd Future back then took a bit to grow on me, but this was definitely a good introduction. At the time, I heard about the album Goblin, and I thought it was absolutely wild. She by Tyler and Frank was on repeat, but I refrained from really exploring outside a few of the popular songs. It was uncomfortable, gruesome, and screamed the ideology of not really caring what others think. But a more dominant segment than any of those? Confusion. Looking between the lines of Tyler's murderous one-liners, I found myself discovering that he was just like any other teenager, battling darkness and confusion of his angsty teenage years due to his father's absence. My father died the day I came out of my mother's hole and left the burden on my soul until I was old enough to understand that the fucking faggot didn't like me much. He loved my mom enough to play. Although Tyler was definitely different in this era, his slasher inspiration was found to be quite clearly from Eminem, Dr. Dre, and Easy E to name a few. Gruesome topics were pretty much shoved under the carpet until Tyler came around, but rather in a gangster connotation, it was more like a lonely teen trapped inside his room with nobody to relate to. All I really knew at the time was Tyler and Odd Future. It's funny because when you look at a 10 person group like Odd Future, it takes time to recognize who is who, and realize who you enjoy more in the group over the others. But as the years went on, I dived into Earl, Frank Ocean, Tyler, Haji, and pretty much the whole group's discography. When Odd Future Tapes Part 2 came out, I was accustomed to the entire group. From clothing, pop-up shops, stickers, and even Loiter Squad, their own TV show. Birthday. gonna bring me a birthday gift on my birthday to my birthday party on my birthday with a birthday gift. Happy birthday. It was honestly almost hard to not know who Odd Future was at the time, because they were everywhere. They were like a family, and the most exciting one you could ever follow. They dominated social media before Snapchat and Instagram came around, with constant updates through their Tumblr and YouTube. At this point, it was realized that Odd Future was very different. Literally every member had their own unique style that made the group flourish. Odd Future grew and continued to grow over the years, in a maturity standpoint, which also affected them musically. Their once small solo acts became more dominant than the group's act, and in 2015, it was clear that the group began to separate, and on June 30th, the group officially issued a breakup through all hip-hop. To me, the breakup was rather anticlimactic. And if you knew anything about Odd Future, you could see it coming. Members say that they wanted to distance themselves from the once cringy attitudes within the group. Although the breakup was disappointing, it was beneficial for the group as a whole. Sid pushed her group the internet even further, with a Grammy nomination for the album Ego Death. Frank released Endless and Blonde, became a household name, and shaped current R&B. Tyler became the greatest version of himself releasing Cherry Bomb, Flower Boy, and Igor, amassing millions of new fans into his new style of music, once inspired by Odd Future. Even Earl, the member that I follow the most, embodying his father's poetic touch into his own music. With him being the best lyricist in Odd Future, he indefinitely uses that to carry his way to the top in his solo career. Other members like Haji, Damo, and Left Brain all went with solo careers too, with their own artistic touch. Although the group dismembered, Tyler tweeted that those seven letters are forever, which could not be more true. They've influenced the music scene and will continue for the years to come. Billie Eilish even stated that she would be nothing without Tyler's music. Kevin Abstract, forerunner of Brockhampton, also said I'm nothing without Frank Ocean. I literally wouldn't exist. Camp Flogna, once a dream from Tyler in 2012, grew to be one of the most sought out festivals of this day. Amassing acts like Kanye, Kid Cudi, Post Malone, Drake, Mac Miller, and Brockhampton, just to name a few. Of course alongside mostly all original members within those sets. Considering that Odd Future inspired many artists to be who they are in this day, it's impossible to pinpoint how many lives like you and I were affected by their music. They taught many of us that not fitting in is okay, that creating art outside the box is acceptable, and that doing what you truly love to do will bring you success. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's video, and please let me know if you were ever into Odd Future. 
and if you follow any of the current solo acts that go on today. Thanks again for watching guys and until next time.